Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create an RPG in Unity and welcome to episode 34. In this tutorial we're going to start taking a look at creating a health bar and integrating it with our enemy attacks as well as fixing one or two little bugs and glitches. Don't forget, click the subscribe button, click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series. And with that in mind, let's get to work. So before we actually start a health bar, there is one um, little glitch that I do want to fix more than anything, and that does involve our weapon. So we need to go to this inflict damage object, which has our script here, as well as the actual swinging sword script. So let's start by opening the inflict damage script in Visual Studio. And when it's open, we will open up the other script as well. So let's head back to Unity, Elven Sword, and open up Swing Sword. Now what we need to do is, in Swing Sword, create a new variable, public, and static. And it's going to be a bool, and we'll have this as is swinging semicolon. So the reason we're doing this is because as it stands now, we can constantly... Uh, click our left mouse button and it will try and continually play that um, swinging sound as well as actually doing whatever damage it needs to do. Uh, the reason is because we never actually check to see if we are currently swinging our sword. So in that case, we need to now go into our coroutine down here. Is swinging equals true, semicolon. And at the end is swinging equals false semicolon and save and let's go to our inflict damage script and what we need to do is we need to check if we have the uh, is swinging set to false so we're going to have if input dot get button down fire one and after that fire one we're going to have double ampersand because it's an and and it's going to be swing sword dot is swinging equals false semicolon and save sorry don't need semicolon don't know why i said that it's a false a habit that one <laughs> so yeah false uh, and save so the imp the, the uh, if statement now says input i get button down fire one and is swinging is equal to false and obviously if we're not it is going to be false so maybe we should set that as false just in case but then as soon as we do actually swing the sword, it sets it true. So we can't repeat the process. So that's just one of the main bugs that we really need to fix. And if I actually turn on the sword now, right there. And there we go. So we'll only do it once. There we go. So that is one bug fixed. Now, another one little glitch was with this water all the way over here. It kind of looks a little bit odd. Do you know what? I'm actually going to turn off the image effects in our scene view. And let's just shift this water out of the way. So when we've put the water in and we've moved things around and done whatever, obviously it's changed. So there we go. There's that little glitch out of the way. So what do we want to do with a health bar? Well, I think one of the most famous RPGs ever, uh, Skyrim, has obviously health bar in the center here. It has your stamina and it has... Uh, your magicka so we're going to try and work all of these three into our game so we're going to start with the health bar which is kind of fun so currently we have those three hearts at the top of your screen if you want to continue using that method you don't really need to do too much in this tutorial but if you want to have the health bar then this is all about you so first and foremost let's bring in um, some texture that we can use as a health bar so i'm going to drag and drop this into unity and you can get this on the website if you head over there downloads and assets rpg tutorial number 34 and you can get this so let's add this to our scene so game object let's go to ui and let's go to image not raw image it has to be image and what we need to do is change this to be a sprite rather than a texture as it stands now so if we click on health bar and up here in texture type change it to a sprite right there click it Click apply. Then on your image that we've just added into our scene, right click, rename, health bar, and drag and drop that sprite over here. Now let's double click the health bar and let's get it into position. So I'm gonna pan the screen around this way 
and we'll have it at the bottom. So let's anchor it at the bottom and let's have the width as 250. In fact, that's probably not enough, is it? Let's have 400 and I'll have the height as 50, so it's a bit thinner. And bring it down probably to about there, maybe. How's that look on the screen? I'm just going to press play and see how that looks. Yeah, okay, that'll do. So next thing we need to do is actually add in what is classed as the health, which is going to be just a normal uh, raw image. So right click and let's go to UI and go to raw image. Now you could obviously use an image for this if you wanted to. It's entirely up to you. There's no real way of saying yes, do this or no, do that. I'm just going to have this as red. Probably a bit of a darker red, maybe about there. And I'm going to have this um, width as maybe 350. That's too much. So 300. 300 looks fine. And height I will have as 40. Still too much. Maybe 30. Okay. So this now represents our health. And our health currently stands at whatever the length of, or rather the width of this particular image is. Now, to make things easier, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to say that our HP in this case is 300. You can have this different amount, and we will be creating different amounts. We just have to create a specific mathematical method for that. But for now, to make things easier and make things uh, quicker, we're just going to have it as 300. So every time maybe a spider hits us, we want to take 10 off our health or something like that. So we now need to get all this into place. So right click and let's rename this to health uh, change I'm going to have it because this is going to be the one that changes up and down depending on if we uh, receive health or lose health. So next thing we're going to need to do is head to our scripts and we're going to need to go into our AI scripts and it is spider AI. That's the first one we're going to go into. And we're also going to need our global health script I believe if I can remember where it is. Um, or is it health monitor? Um, I can't remember. I think it, I th we'll go in health monitor for now because we're going to need to modify all this in here. So public static int health value. We're now going to set that as 300. Uh, internal health, obviously that's going to be the same because that's a static one. So we can see that that's fine. Um, I'm going to annotate out these hearts because we don't actually need them and the reason we don't actually need them is quite simply because the idea of what we're doing is all going to be via uh, this health bar that we've created we don't actually need to use them anymore obviously unless you intend to do that so we need to create a another variable which is going to be that health bar so if i can spell <laughs> so public uh, game object and we'll call it just health bar I guess and hopefully you've already guessed what is going to happen here because this is actually going to be a lot of fun to see happen because what I intend to happen is when the spider actually hits us this is going to decrease and eventually we'll probably get to the point where we can pick up a heart and increase or obviously use a potion there's there's absolutely tons and tons of different ways that we can actually work with this so it's going to be a lot of fun to create so next thing we need to do is let's go to our spider script which is spider ai and let me see if i can remember where we actually deal the damage so we need to reference the health monitor is it in here there it is so health monitor dot health value currently it's set as one because if you remember uh, quite a while ago, we set uh, each heart would be one. So theoretically, we've got one or two hits and we're pretty much dead. Uh, we kind of don't want that, do we? So we're going to change this to 10. And while we're at it, what I think we're going to do is actually get rid of, or rather turn off the hearts that are on our screen right now. So let's select all three hearts, turn them off. Just make sure they are gone because they are no longer required for yeah they're gone so they're no longer required to actually make all of this work um 
Let's try and think of the best order of doing this now because there's, there's a couple of different things we have to do, but I want everything to make sense. So I'm going to save that script now. So the spider hits us and we take 10 off. Okay, that's all good and well. So health monitor, we now need to make within health monitor our health bar equal to whatever our health value is. So what I think I will do is we'll leave in health value. We'll leave that there because that is the one that takes us to say game over. So I'll annotate out these if statements because we don't need them because we're no longer using hearts. And below this bit here, what we need to do is make sure our health bar itself always reflects whatever that health value is. That is massively important. That's the key to all of this working. And we need to have health bar dot get component and in spiky brackets, rect transform. The reason we get the rect transform is because we're referencing this section right here, which is rect transform. So obviously we need to then reference something inside this to get it working. So open close bracket dot size delta. And the size delta is a way of actually enabling us to modify this section right here and change everything about it. And what we need to do is make it equal to new vector two, not vector three, because we remember we're dealing with a 2D environment at this point. We're dealing only with 2D. UI is not 3D, well, at least for us in this sense anyway. And what we do is we need to have whatever our health value is. So as we set it to 300, if we were to lose 10, our health value would then be set to 290. So we need health value, comma, and then the height. And we currently have the height set as 30. That's going to be consistently the same. That's never really going to change. So save that there. Remember, this line is the key to everything working. So what we need to do now is test this actually works. And I'm hoping, I am hoping that when the spider attacks us, we are going to lose some of this health. Obviously, we're just going to have to quickly run through this bit of the game because we uh, can't get straight to the spider. So it's a good idea for us to do this because we can check everything out here. So we saw there that our post-processing wasn't working on that camera, which looks at the board. So that's obviously something that we can fix. Obviously my post-processing has gone a little bit over the top with the um, Bloom. I, I, I've said it before, I am a massive fan of Bloom. I'm a sucker for Bloom. But obviously you do not have to have your Bloom as intense or as, as crazy as what I've got. So let's hand this back in. Complete quest. Excellent. Now let's talk to our NPC here. Uh, spider problem, go outside the village, kill the spiders and their boss. Here is the key. Sure. So now we should be able to see our health bar in action as soon as we go out here to our spider. Remember, this is only going to work on one of the enemies. It's not going to work on our boss enemy. It's only going to work on this spider right here. Oh. So I've gone all that way and I've realized I've not changed. Oh, I've not added it. <laughs> that's, a, that's a classic rookie mistake. Okay, so um, I think I've just got to search for health. So health monitor and I didn't add that health bar onto the, uh, yeah, that's my fault. Okay, so I'm going to save that now, test it again. As I go through this, I'm going to tell you all about what is coming up in this series. So at this point, we've done quite a lot and it's starting to look full. It's starting to look a bit more to it. So what I think we're going to do in the next tutorial is just quickly add in a bit of overworld, uh, not so much music, but some ambience to the scene. And after that, we're going to start building a new scene and that new scene is going to be a cave look that we pretty much started uh, building is it last tutorial, tutorial before? so we're going to start bringing all that in and we're going to have the ability to actually go to a different scene but retain everything that we've collected here like our stats our sword our health all that kind of thing so that is going to be what is coming up in the next tutorial and it's from there that we're going to be able to really develop 
um, this RPG quite a lot further than what it currently is. So let's quickly check out this now. There we go. So you can see our health going down. Perfect. Okay. So what would happen when we get to the end of that is obviously we will get game over. So on top of what I've just said, what we're doing next tutorial, uh, we're also going to probably sort those hearts out so they give us health and also apply the same logic to our boss spider, just to make things more consistent. So guys, until that next tutorial, thank you very much for watching.